Hey friends, before we start today's episode, I have an important message to share with you. As you must be aware, due to certain new policies, you are not able to comment on our videos. But don't you worry, my friends, you can still share your valuable feedback, comments, views, and love at our email ID peekabookidsfeedback at gmail.com. Similarly, you can also visit our Instagram and Facebook page and continue to engage with us. We are looking forward to hearing from you. Oh, it is so sad to see this virus has turned into a pandemic and has spread all around our beautiful planet. But how? Oh, that's a pretty intelligent question, little kitty. Hey friends, so in today's episode, let us learn about the history of pandemics and try to explore the question of how viruses and disease spread and what we can do to stop future outbreaks. Zoom in! Diseases come in many shapes and forms, but the most common cause behind these illnesses are bacteria and viruses and when these diseases spread across the continents of the globe, we call them pandemics. Pandemics have occurred throughout the history of humanity, like cholera, bubonic plague, smallpox, measles, and the most recent being the COVID-19 pandemic, declared as such by the World Health Organization. However, the most brutal pandemic killer so far is influenza, the viral flu that can be deadly. Flu is one of the common diseases circulating around the globe that generally appears in every autumn and winter season. And as a majority of us have already been exposed to the virus in the previous season, our immune system is already prepared to tackle these unwanted guests and cures our body quickly. But every 20 to 40 years or so, the influenza virus changes its plans and exchanges its genes with some wild flu virus present in pigs or other poultry animals in the process called antigenic shift. This breaks a dramatic mutation in the virus, making them stronger with unpredictable behavior. That makes it hard for the animal's immune system to detect and fight these new species of viruses as they begin to take over its body, causing symptoms like fever, inflamed eyes and running snouts. And once a human comes in contact with these poor infected animals, the virus quickly takes this opportunity and jumps into a new host. And as we live in a globalized world that allows us to visit anywhere through a well-developed transport system, people can carry these diseases around the world. And to do so, all it takes is one sneeze that enables the virus to jump from one host to another and causes a severe pandemic in a matter of hours like it happened in 2003 when a Chinese doctor arrived at a hotel in Hong Kong. Unaware of his condition, he was hosting a new animal origin illness called SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Within a day of his arrival, many other guests got infected and started to feel unwell out of which some boarded the plane to different parts of the world. But thanks to the quick emergency measures, many international flights were cancelled and the pandemic was brought under control. But not before it infected 29 other countries and killing over 1,000 people. But the vital question is, what can we do to stop such global pandemics? that may have a devastating impact as wars or natural calamities. Well, on an honest note, there are no sure ways to deal with such situations. 
But fortunately, due to advancement in science and technology, it is way easier to make vaccines than it was years ago. Yes, vaccines are the only solution we have for fighting any pandemic. And to know more about it, you can see our new video on this topic called How Vaccines Work. The link is in the description below. And in the meanwhile, you can take various measures on a personal level to stop any disease from spreading further and stay healthy. Like wash your hands often with soapy water or use an alcohol-based hand cleaner or gel sanitizer, especially after coughing and sneezing. And do not forget to cover your mouth and nose with a tissue and make sure to throw the tissue in the trash. Don't touch your mouth, nose and eyes until you have washed your hands. And most importantly, stay home and stay safe. Trivia time! Did you know between 1918 and 1920, a disturbingly deadly outbreak of influenza tore across the globe, infecting over a third of the world's population. But what separated the 1918 flu pandemic from other influenza outbreaks was the victims, where influenza had always previously only killed weakened patients. It had begun striking down hardy and completely healthy young adults while leaving children and those with weaker immune systems was still alive. Hope you learned something new in today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out.